And there we go. Hello, everybody. It's Krusty Old Crow back in to do a TCCC for the day. I had a plan, but as we learn in the military, no plan survives first contact. It's uh, it's just a fancy way of saying you could pour all your efforts into worrying about something and making sure everything's going to go a certain way. But when real life happens, <laughs> you're kind of screwed. So, that could be a good thing and that could be a bad thing. And as you see from the video title, what brought you on to the video today, it's a good thing because today we got a mystery box. Uh, it's not that much of a mystery of it. I know some of the contents in it from my good friend, Loki Wartooth, who's been a, uh, the quiet, I, I would call him the sponsor of this channel, really. He's been my own, only real 3D provider, uh, one that I've been pretty dedicated to. Uh, and that, um, you know, I'm not the only guy using them. Uh, Aaron the Toy Hanser and quite a few of you have actually been working with Loki as well. And we all know him as uh, Model Misfits 1138. True. Uh, but as you can see, I've been bashing on with a lot of conversions lately. And uh, just to recap on my last episode, I, I showed you this. This is my, uh, my vamp substitute, right? What happens if you order your vamp from Wish? Aaron knew about this. Uh, I think Loki knew a little bit about it, but uh, yeah, that was your last video. And of course I had uh, also made a vamp video based on my friends, well, using my friends vamp. Uh, so they all kind of worked together. I had a lot of fun video uh, doing that video and it's just, I'm quickly explaining it guys, uh, just because some of you might've been like, what the hell did I walk into with that video yesterday? You know, and why is he in his garage today? But we'll get to that. No, uh, yesterday, these are our toys. I like to have fun. I am carving out my spot into YouTube and it's an ad hoc basement production, guys. That's all it is. I'm not trying to be the new Viper Island and doing a lot of editing and, and uh, formatting and turning it into a half hour news special. Uh, but nor am I really focusing on much editing at all. I am trying to learn on my Chromebook uh, once I find the power cable for it, how YouTube works on that because I see that there's things I can do better. And I think once I have you know, the phone, the iPhone, the iPad, and the uh, the Chromebook going, I think. Between all that, I be, should be able to do some more stuff with the actual videos. But in lieu of not being able to edit, what I can always do is improvise and just have a good time with my toys for you, like I had the other day with the video for this. So what am I going to talk about today, guys? Well, you know how I rely on this tablet until I get all that stuff done. And to answer the question as to why I'm in the garage, it's because I've been working on some conversions and other things today. Uh, and have been for, for the last little while. So if you look behind me, you can see I, I've got the subscriber wall because I want to glue some more panels upwards for it to make room for some other stuff. And I'm thinking I got to finish off uh, the road part and the sidewalk part on there too. And I was thinking, what if the sidewalk was like a, a walk of fame of YouTube subscribe, uh, famous YouTubers, <laughs> famous in our community. I mean, like, you know, like little stars, like, you know, even, even the ones you hear me is having questionable opinions about all of them. Just put everybody on there. Just, Everybody I watch. So, I mean, I, I would even dig back to when I started on YouTube and I was heavily, heavily influenced by Saturday Morning Toy Collector and Kyle Peterson. I think they deserve their spots on that walk as well. So, yeah, that's uh, that's that's the 500 subscriber prize. You guys know there's a 350 contest. I talked about it during that. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it here today. What I am going to talk about is some things that I'm on. One of the things that had come up the other day, well, a few weeks ago, was doing... Something with the the Batwing, whatever toy that was, uh, that I had picked up at a thrift store. I had originally said Cobra Claw. And, uh, you know, between a thousand suggestions, and pardon me for always forgetting who it suggested. I want to say it was Digital Diarrhea, maybe, or possibly Loki or Crimson. Sorry, guys. Uh, the, the Grievance... I, I, I grievance and Red Dawn Wolverine's idea always stood out and the rest of you guys uh yeah there are ideas I've talked to individuals about that have stood out but sometimes something goes on to a, a thrift store find and I don't touch it for a few weeks and I kind of forget who suggested that this be a water vehicle and I thought yeah that works it's got the right uh shape for it I just didn't like the little bat wing 
But I decided instead of being a Joe one, because I'm doing a lot of Joe vehicles for end state, right? And, and I'll explain that in a bit. Um, I would turn it into a Cobra one because I have the Cobra eel and because the retro car eels are coming out. So I went with this kind of a paint scheme. I wanted it to be like a, uh, uh, a school of fish manta, but what there's the white and gray pattern is zigzagging is there's a little Cobra uh, hooded face on there that I was working. It's not great, but I mean, it's just a backdrop that's going to be maybe hanging from a hoist, but there is a little Cobra head in that. Uh, trying to just kind of do the emblem on that and I'm thinking I'm gonna lose that fin because I don't really like it I either replace it with some sort of other stabilizer or do something uh, And I've got to get rid of the Batman icons on the wings I'm just gonna cover those somehow, but I'm thinking about doing a little magnetized feature on those bottom sponsons for something to attach uh, Be them torpedoes sure or some sort of weapon, but I'm I'm also looking at, you know, extra propulsion or even, you know, uh, flight. Who knows? Maybe this thing can fly and go under like the shark. You know, it is the Joe universe and it's a fun universe to exist in. And you guys hear me as a, you know, an armed forces veteran, as a combat veteran, uh, in armored vehicles especially you know i'm very critical about weapons tactics uniforms all that other stuff but i'm doing so in the spirit of my character of who i am but i do love the imagination factor and don't think i don't think about things like that like yeah man and it flew it's like uh the community the sub much off top <laughs> you know that was awesome anyways uh so working on that again I haven't really gotten a name for it i'm trying to avoid things like manta or stingray but i mean <laughs> it, it is what it is i can see it hanging in the back or from a hoist or just on the ball wall somewhere on the cobra cobra display which uh yeah that's gonna be fun too uh you guys remember the barbie jet skis i'll show you those as i'm working on right now because uh these things i don't gatekeep right like eventually i reveal all sometimes i like to wait on a few things until it's at the right point to talk about these things at a buck 50 a pop i'll just talk about them as i go but these are uh these are gonna be night force uh i've decided that i'm going to just give them a little buckshy thing because these can be um carried by my mean dogs which i'm not showing oh sorry mean dogs no i can't build mean dogs those are too hard to do for joe to man we're gonna wait for a has lab on a mean dog woody triple two i'm sorry buddy a mean dog for me it means uh, just doing another kit bash conversion with something I found at a thrift store. So maybe I'll just start calling it the Mad Dog because I've got decals for that. Anyways, the Mad Dogs can haul these and many other things. I've checked, I've sized, I've made arrangements. But yeah, doing up Night Forest call, uh, Customs. Uh, and I'm not going to bother shrinking down the handlebars. I had shown, I think, uh, a couple days ago when I showed these things that I wasn't a big fan of the overall size of the handlebars. But... Uh, overall it's a workable jet ski absolutely so uh and i mean you could probably pose two figs on there no problem right two cobras two night force whatever uh just an oversized jet ski and this was from barbie of all things i would find these at the dollar tree so i am going to try and find more of these because i want to throw them into that 350 prize pool i want to send them to a couple of guys who are always sending me stuff i don't know who one of them might be <laughs> Jeez, who sent me you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He, somebody could enhance these. And who sent me this box? Oh, these could work with some misfit stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So definitely going to track down more of these. And the kayaks I got, which are inside. Because they're getting worked on. Those ones are tucked away for a secret. So, yep, you're going to see more of the jet skis. I'll show you one I didn't show you a whole lot of. And you guys are like, but the box. And I'm like, I know, I know, I know. I'm torturing myself right now, right? I know. <laughs> the hair is a little crazy today. Let's keep it going crazy. I'm feeling crazy because I do intend to cut this off soon. Uh, okay, so you guys know I've got a hovercraft. I keep saying it's the big boss level. I really got to get back to it. But the problem is, is I keep having all these more immediate conversion needs uh to work up for the set to work up for the show to get figures to get practice in for the prizes that i'm doing uh and just to please my adhd in general and i work on many things at a time but i am going back to that hovercraft uh at stages like i said it's my big boss level 
but that doesn't mean I don't get a hovercraft for our night force. So this this thing uh, I am doing up just to go with those jet skis. I figure night force, night raid. You know, it's almost like having the uh, well, what is it the night the night attack boat or the night missions boat with Firefly, right? Like it's uh, in lieu of a devil fish air, my night force will still be very water capable. Hmm, but yeah, I, I know Aaron's got that Fortnite boat on the go from my challenge to him with the double fish. I haven't found a fang yet to do uh, to meet that challenge. And we don't put an end date on these things. They're just fun challenges. But I did dremel this thing out. It had a panel here, which prohibited me from setting anything down. And now with that panel gone, I have a nifty little... Burp, 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 burp. <laughs> uh... Everglade Assault Boat, right? I can put a new panel on that. I can leave it open. I can do a lot of things with that. And it's just a, another nifty little prop for the backgrounds, right? Uh, there you go, guys. So those are some things I'm working on. Uh, the turtle layer, which you guys saw. Sorry, I got a really bad tangle in my hair. Ow, man. <laughs> I am, wow, the idiot. Wow, very distracted today because I just try not to think about the box. Um, the Ram, I have one of two sidecars ready to go. The I'm going to start loading that up the way I, I pictured it. Not going to talk about that till that's done. And the Turtle Layer is getting the computer, computer, computer monitors put back in it. They were what was positioned in front of the chair. But of course, I, I just had to prime this. And I, I got the stickers off and I managed to retain the stickers on this little tin. And uh, if what I have planned doesn't sit well with me, I at least one or two of those can be drawn to, upon to be replaced. But I plan on bringing these computers up a little bit more presentably as cool computers in my eyes for my end state uh, dioramas. But uh, as far as lighting goes, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. I, I was thinking about trying, but I might and might not. Uh, like I said, I'm trying to keep these things quick and dirty because I feel like what's in that box is going to keep me very, 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 very busy. And I, I want to get these things produced. So these are the conundrums you see me face. Now, before I do get to the box, guys, I wanted to talk about the, uh, the Marvel uh, stream that occurred today, April 15th. Uh, because I am an X-Men fan, I am a comic book fan, uh, that was the natural pr progression from G.I. Joe as I was growing up, right? So I even told you some thing, we're going to talk about the Marvel News today. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I don't know their names. I know Lenny, Emily, and Tony, but I, this was the first time I've ever watched a Marvel Legends Pulse uh, stream. Right, and uh, it was just because I was out here watching Crimson Cobra Commander's latest video, and uh, this came up. So I decided to tune in and see what was coming from Marvel Legends. And man, am I glad I did. It never occurred to me this gave me a run-up on what I could look for for conversion figs, for sure. As you guys know, I don't really collect Marvel figs, but there's the odd one, like Tigra. Uh, and more recently, my Daredevil Electra and my uh, Tarantula all that I pick up on these amazing clearance uh, sales and that some of them I'll use for conversions and then Tiger I just have off to the side because I view her as my Tiger Force mascot, right? But did this ever take me back to 2004 uh, and 2003? We, they announced six figures. They showed us some. I got some pictures for you. The first one they showed was the Astonishing Wolverine. Now, uh, those of you collecting Marvel Legends already realize, yeah, they've got the Astonishing Cyclops and the Astonishing Emma, apparently, either in the works or out there. Like I said, I don't buy them. Uh, and Wolverine, to me, doesn't have any real good conversion for uh, for Joe potential. But you get a couple of different head sculpts, a couple of different hand sculpts, and they kept describing this as the most articulate old Wolverine you're going to be able to get. And so I already can attest that Marvel, because uh, the Marvel Legends don't, compare to Joe, uh, <laughs> sorry, Joe doesn't compare to Marvel Legends, really, as far as posability, just because the amount of extras that uh, Hasbro puts onto the Joe figurine that inhibits certain bend motions and things like that. And I'm talking about the tack vest and things like that. Wearing classic Marvel superheroes are all in these body suits with different kinds of designs, but very little bulk 
uh, added on that reduces them. And and there are characters that are Iron Man for sure, um, but there's a lot more that aren't. So when they say Wolverine's hyper articulate, super articulate. You got a picture, you, everything you've ever thought Wolverine could do, you can do with the camera. And of course, that Wolverine would come from uh, Joss Whedon's run on Astonishing X-Men. And it's it's no coincidence he made that one of the best runs of X-Men in the longest time. Two big things he did is he had left Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, the TV series he had been doing. Uh, he had just finished up with that. He was very used to series like that. So when he got hold of the Astonishing X-Men that was being launched and he read his roster, he had the perfect, uh, the perfect opening, which was, of course, to treat Kitty Pride very much like a Slayer, like uh, a young destined mutant girl uh, in the big leagues with people that uh, are highly powerful, but in amongst you know, the battle against Ord and, and the break worlds, uh, aliens that were off to, you know, disrupt things and Kitty blows in, up comes somebody they all thought was dead and it was Colossus. And it was this most impactful reunion in Marvel Comics, specifically in X-Men, that most people never saw coming. And it was amazing writing at the time and cool art. Very good art. And uh, yeah, The Astonishing X-Men. If you haven't read the Gifted series, uh, I would do that. Uh, but yeah, good series. So it's nice to see them make figures based on that series, of course, right? So what are you, uh, your thoughts on the Marvel Legends? Uh, because I know that you collect a lot. Of, you like these. And Woody222, uh, I've been watching his videos lately. If you haven't checked out his channel, do so. Would Woody Triple Deuce, the action figure junkie or addict? Attic, I think. Um, you can correct that in the comments for us, Woody. That'd be great. Uh, but I watched this video and it, it was like a slap in the face. Motorcycles. There's so many motorcycles in Marvel Legends I didn't think about. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be doing what Woody does and hunting down some good motorcycles from Marvel Legends. But unfortunately, Marvel Legends didn't really show us a good one today. Uh, but Woody might disagree. But uh, before I show you that, we'll show you that uh, Warbird came out. All right. So uh, yeah, this is Carol Danvers in her Warbird outfit. Uh, so if you're like, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Carol Danvers is Miss Marvel, right? No, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Carol Danvers is a few people. Carol Danvers is Miss Marvel now, and she was Miss Marvel back in the original days in the early 80s and everything like that, right? True. Uh, but Miss Marvel became Warbird after she met a little young mutant that uh, got her hands on her. You might have heard of her, Rogue. Back when Rogue first got started, before we knew her as Marie... Uh, and before we understood the relationships she had with, uh, you know, Mystique and, and her background, Rogue was a out of control mutant, had no idea how her powers worked and just simply touching you was this incalculated disaster that would occur with her where she would absorb your power and memories and leave you an unconscious blithering mess. And sometimes the person would be waking up and recover to get their powers back over time and she would lose them. And sometimes that didn't happen. Like with her first boyfriend, Cody, uh, it wasn't good. She, I don't think she ever lost those memories. But more specifically with Carol Danvers, when she fought her, she took a good portion of Carol Danvers' creability, which Marvel does as a Tesseract thing now on the Disney stuff. But back then, you know, they were alien abilities that Rogue permanently absorbed, and that was why Rogue became so strong, ultra-dense flesh, and flight. Now you know, Joe. Uh, so there you go. That's another good picture of the figure that uh, they announced. And oh my God, man, that's a one dirty iPod, eh? Listen, uh, that is a very articulate figure, though. Again, nothing much inheriting it. You know, guys that are big into the female designs are going to want possibly that body just to slap other heads on it. And who could blame you, you perverted bastards? I'd probably join in with you because I'm equally perverted. <laughs> no, it's just, you can respect a good body sculpt. And when it comes to female body sculpts, you know, when a company does it right, you grab on because that same company is going to do it very wrong at some point. And so many companies do. They make figures that just aren't compatible for doing a lot of com conversions that work. And Marvel is one that you can 
What I like about the Marvel figures is you can add on to them. You can add components very easily. It's much easier to add on to something sometimes than it is to take away uh, when it comes to conversions uh, and make it look better, right? I, at least that's an opinion. Uh, maybe that's a toss of a coin. If you guys are doing conversions, agree or disagree, let me know in the comments what's easier, adding on or taking away. Uh, so finishing up with her, Warbird, and another character she was, which we saw now has been retconned or whatever in the Disney Plus stuff again, is that she was actually also binary. And if you watched Miss Marvel or didn't, spoiler alert, they drop binary, but that's not Carol Danvers being binary because it's an alternate universe, right? Uh, so they also talked about Superior Spider-Man. All right, at first glance, I thought, wait a minute, is he saying that wrong? Isn't that Iron Spider from the Civil War series by McNiven and Mendes? No, 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 no. This was after I got out collecting, but I remembered this because every now and then I'll go to my public library, sign out a graphic novel and have a look. And uh, Superior Spider-Man comes from the story arc where uh, P Peter Parker, Soul, and Dr. Octavius, uh, Doc Ock, um, they switch, right? So for quite a while in the comics, uh, Doc Ock was actually occupying the, the Spider-Man identity. And so he became a very different kind of stylized spider utilizing all that stuff. Uh, and I think Peter was dead or like his soul was, it was a weird series. I didn't really read it as much as peruse it. And I understood the concept of, oh, okay, so Doc Ock's running it. One of the features they talk about is two head choices and the other head choice is just more of a flash of, um, what is it? Fan appeal for the comics because you might be going, what is that? Some sort of gray digital reader? No, my friends. This is probably one of the most respectable things I've seen on a Marvel figure shown to me. This is this is beautiful to me. And I would love this head just to, to poise it up as, even just the head, just poise it on my thumb every day and go, this is when Hasbro does it right. That's a nod to every comic book panel they did because uh, Superior Spider-Man's eye lenses were actually more reflective. And so the artists kept using it as an opportunity to show the building scapes of New York as he would swing through. So that's what you're seeing is you're seeing New York skyscrapers on there. And I think that's gorgeous. That is a just right there. Right there, buds. Okay, uh, they also announced Scar. Scar is going to be a Pulse exclusive, apparently. The thing is, uh, if you're not fig if you don't follow the Hulk lore from back, this was back in about 2007 or 8, because I remember, but all these comics were coming out while I was uh, getting them shipped overseas to Afghanistan for something to read while I was in my bunk. What few times I was actually in a bunk. Um, Scar was the son of Hulk. Uh, and he was conceived during the time frame leading up to World War Hulk, and it was Planet Hulk timeline. Apparently, what ends up happening, just to summarize, the Marvel Universe core guys of Reed Richards, Fab, uh, Tony Stark, etc., they decide the Hulk's too much of a liability. Trick them and launch them into space. Uh, yeah, it was supposed to go a certain place, but it got lost. And we get to a battle planet, uh, and he uh, he becomes the gladiator uh, of that battle planet, wins over that battle planet. And that was basically what they used to launch the plots of uh, Thor Ragnarok and a couple others, was based off where Banner went. Uh, but in, in World War Hulk, he comes back, and he's really mad. Because they actually blew up that planet thinking, oh, yeah, well, uh, you know, we, we, if he ever comes back, they, they, yeah, for whatever reason, they tried to kill him. He comes back and he starts and he kicks Marvel Universe's ass in World War Hulk. But there's your scale. I found it funny. They were trying to denote that he had an eight and a half inch scale. And I'm like, it looks even bigger when you put it next to Wolverine. Uh, but eight and a half inches. And then they announced... This is one I have to have as a conversion, guys. And, of course, as with every two-pack, you have to accept the one you do want and the one that's just fine on its own. But the Heroes Fire, Luke Cage, and D Danny Rand, Iron Fist. And it's the Luke Cage, guys. Now, hear me out. You guys know I love Tiger Force. I love Night Force. I love Joe. I, I love Cobra. And I'm not going to go down the road of how I feel about repaints. Why would I hate repaints now? Did I hate them in the 80s? Because everything was a freaking a repaint back in the 80s and 90s too, right? And like I said, uh, to, uh, the conversation on Punk with Toys uh, last week, you know, if, 
If you're hating repaints, don't you dare be the comic collector that has variant covers and polybagged editions and all that other stuff, right? Because that is the exact same goddamn thing. In fact, at least Hasbro makes it respectable and you can play with it. You don't have to leave it in the bag. You box collectors do that. But uh, yeah, I could easily do my end state variant of Roadblock out of something like that or any other kind of good diverse character because Luke Cage is a badass and to pass on that, never. If I ever found that two pack on a reasonable price and it is going direct to retail, I'll consider it. I do like the Iron Fist as, uh, sculpt as well. And I was thinking, you know, there's something in there, you know, just something in there. If I did it right and, and played around with it, maybe I would have that second uniform for Quick Kick that I was saying they could get away with doing now that they've gotten the traditional Quick Kick out of the way and we need to do something. But maybe it is still too stereotypical. I don't know, but I'm just saying, right? I'm just saying. <laughs> this was my favorite shot of that. No one cares, Poshmark, get off my screen. Right there, my favorite shot of that. Right, so you have lots of options coming up with these and we're almost through the pre-orders, but they're coming up on April 23rd for the pre-orders for that. Sorry. Uh, and then that'll be uh, talking about the bikes now. All right, what a, there you go. We're getting a new motorcycle for the 90s Ghost Rider Danny Catch, okay? Uh, I, I wasn't too psyched about this one. I won't be picking this up, even though there's the old motorcycle from the old Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze, I think it was. And then Danny Ketch had that 90s one. And this was a little too close to the Lee Field era for me. Uh, I was not a fan of the art of this series or the designs of the Ghost Rider bike in this time frame. This was the, uh, the late 90s, early 2000s, if I remember. Uh, but yeah, lots of cool flame effects, though, man. And lots of photography possibilities because you could set the flames up at different angles to depict different things. So that's kind of cool. I just not a big bike frame kind of lover. Uh, anyways, moving on. They uh, that was it for their announcements. There, I guess there's gonna be a follow up stream where they announce another like three or four stuff going on. But then they started throwing around this plastic rock around, and they made a really bad skit. And trust me, I know bad skits. Well, I embrace them. Uh, but they did a real bad skit where they started passing around that rock, and they kept saying it's a really hard rock. It's a really hard rock. And I was like, yeah, He-Man made a really hard rock that transformed. Uh, and it wasn't very well received. So clearly we're not bragging about a rock. Uh, so I'm going to call it right now. I think because they went back to the, the 90s and uh, late 90s, early 2000s to, you know, the, the 2000s to 2010 specifically era of X-Men dug out that astonishing X-Men dig. I think who they were tossing around was Santos, uh, aka Rock Slide, part of that new X-Men breed that they had going for a little while there uh, in the early 2000s. Really, I think it was an understated series. These guys, they dealt with Nimrod, uh, you know, recently the fall of, uh, Fall of the House of X or, or Dawn of whatever. Or I've lost track of what the X-Men call all their stuff now, but they've, they're, they're evolving again. But they've recently lost a battle to the AIs that control Nimrod, including the return of Bastion, apparently. So uh, I could definitely see the character they were playing with being a piece of uh, Santos as his kit because Rock Slide was drawn a couple of different ways. But he normally, at first, he was kind of like that. But once, like we saw, Rogue and them kind of taught him, you know, you don't have boundaries. Uh, he looked like a lot of different things. And you could shatter him to a lot of pieces, and then he would rebuild. Uh, he was, yeah, he was like everything the thing should have been. Um, but maybe another character going with him, maybe he's part of a two-pack. And maybe we're getting Anil as well. The reason I say they'd want to do Anil with them, one... Anil's going to be a fun figure to make because he's disproportionate in his mutation, right? He's, he's, uh, you can see it in his arms there, right? He's, um, he's more lizard-like. He regrows. He does things. Uh, I believe he was also homosexual. And you know that Marvel likes to put that, uh, that whole, you know, equity and, uh, cultural awareness thing on display when they can. And I think having these two as a team, the heterosexual Santos and Anil, 
And you can call me down for having an opinion on that. I just see a marketing strategy that I'm just like, yeah. And they were two characters that were well liked and no one would see them coming. I'm hoping, right? But I think that it's good to have these reflections out there. And, uh, and I'll, you gotta, you gotta admit guys, like, uh, you know, as a traditional comic guy, um, there was some growing that needed to happen with comics over every generation, right? And I'm just trying to stay in front of the growing I saw happen as I was leaving comics. I still have strong opinions about things, but I have to try and understand things better, right? So that's uh, that's that about the animal stuff. Oh my goodness. I, uh, oh, this means we're at the box, guys. Oh boy. All right. Here we go. I said I was going to make this a long one today. Model Misfits 1138, Loki Wartooth, as you have seen him, and you guys know all about him. Uh, he's been sending me teaser pics and, and saying, where's the box? The box will be here. It's in Toronto. It was in Toronto on Friday. I had to wait all weekend for him to make it two and a half hours over here to Ottawa, but it's here. Uh, but just to tease you guys a little bit, look, he's got, uh, he's got the vamp stuff too, but he's done his own stuff for it. What did he do? Well, you're going to have to go check him out at Model Misfits 1138. And uh, you go see what he does. I'm going to open this box. And I'm going to find out what he's done. I've got, uh, you know, i got to clear the path for him. Move my move my gambler. That's what we called it. The gambler rambler. All right. That's if you wonder what I called it. Gambler rambler. Uh, so that's going up here. And I think that's going to get a whole crew going beside it pretty soon, if I know Loki. Uh, so, I've moved the Gambler to Rambler. I've got my opening tools. Oh, I'm drawing this out, eh? Drawing it out with suspense. Really, I'm just torturing myself because you know what? I like that delayed gratification. It makes me a wonderful lover. <laughs> uh, that's what I tell myself, right, dear? Chirp, chirp, chirp. All right, uh, let's uh, let's get the crow down here. Let's uh, find Loki's music. We gotta find Loki's music. Oh, uh, what's in the box? I know. What's in the fucking box? Okay, all right. Let me get the music going. Uh, move my coffee cup. Sorry, guys. And uh, I gotta find the right thing. And Loki, I'm sorry, buddy. If you like this band or don't like this band. But uh, when I think of how crazy it is that I can't predict what you've done, this is the song I think of, and I, I, I'll probably get a copyright. I got a copyright the other day for just the intro to Jesus Built My Hot Rod, but, uh, well, let's see who can name it in the comments. What do I associate Loki Wartooth's, uh, we'll say his theme song? Well, it's this. Your money is a ticket Hold up, keep your kids out here They too young to play in there Okay, that's enough. <laughs> I just really like that song, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Crow liked Insane Clown Posse just a little bit for a little while. And oh my God. Right off the bat, something flew out. Yeah. Okay. This is where the crow's got to get, uh, he's, he's got to finish getting set up, right? Maybe I can play a little bit more. That song just gets me pumped. I don't know. So we got a stand for something. I, I know what this could be. It could be a stand for two things. Both would be great. Ah, uh, we'll just drop this exacto blade. Uh, that worked out well. Keep a straight face. Where is the sorting bins? There we go. Um, once I pull that blade out of my Achilles, we'll put things in a box. All right, that's enough music. God, this is your worst opening. Uh, so, yeah, we've got a stand here. Let's find out what went with it. <laughs> oh, my God. He said he loaded this thing. He did. Yes. Thank you, Loki. You know what? I'm not even going to say out loud what that is. If you guys don't know what that's going to be for or who that's going to be for... Don't know what I've already said before? Then you haven't watched none of my videos. And I'm not going to recap it. Dear Joe fan, you figured out. Tell me in the comments. What's that mortar for? 
All right, and I got some wrapping paper. Oh, okay, we got some more things sitting on top. I'm gonna, these are things, now they did get sent back to him. He said there was a problem with the label. And he said, I threw some more stuff in. Now I see what he did, he literally, <coughs> that's awesome. But yeah, we got a backpack, curtain around some ammo. Oh, it's gonna, it's got some function to it, guys. So that looks like it's got a rope feature, like a winch. That's what I'm picturing is a winch. That's so cool. That, and it's got mechanical tools. This could be for a mechanic. But what, yeah, I'll figure this out. That's neat. That 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 is really cool. It feels like maybe those are the mortar tools. Like there's going to be mortar shells in there. And this might be something different than what I'm thinking. But very neat. Very cool. And then we've got, ooh. Oh, that's. That's got to be part of a sectional weapon. This is going to be interesting, guys. Let's find out together what that is. But already it looks like a little burp gun that hangs over the shoulder. But now that I look at it, it's kind of a big body upper receiver, like a large housing automatic weapon. I think this is a compartment, a component of something. We're going to have a look. We're going to put that aside. Now I can safely remove some paper. I've, I've got a couple little broken pieces here and there, but... Uh, you know, I've never told Loki about that, and I, I'll, I'll mention it now because I'm always just such a satisfied customer, and he knows that. I think that just goes on to this piece. Yeah, it does. It connects to this one. Uh, so I'm going to put that safely in there, knowing that I've got to do a little glue. Yeah, every now and then, something breaks apart, but I don't throw any of it away. As a configure conversion guy that's learning and learning new tricks, new things every time, uh, getting new ideas, having new thoughts... Every piece gets used, even broken straps eventually get glued to the side of something else. So I gotta make sure that no, no little pieces fall out of the paper. And Loki, thank you, this thing was heavy. And we got a note, I think. No, we got, it's a piece of textured, oh, what's that? He's got something engraved and stamped on it, it looks like. No. No, 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 no. There might be something I'm not going to show here yet. I don't know yet. I don't know. We got some corkboard. Now, you know what corkboard's really good for? Another Mojabeist came across this. He made a video about this, and I was like, he was right, because I've used it before. Roads. Corkboard makes good roads. So we got something in here I got to open separately. Uh, it's uh, a Salvo's dressing mix. <laughs> This will be interesting, but clearly it's something that he's concerned will spill all over the place. Here we go. There's a mortar shell for the mortar. There you go. Right on. And, uh, yeah. I think one thing I wanted to tell you guys, if I make more, when I do make the character that uses mortars, uh, one thing I'm going to add that you don't see on these are charge rings. And charge rings are, you stack them onto the mortar runner, drop them in. They're actually what's going off, apparently. Uh, I learned about that watching the infantry, but I would have to just double check to see how the charge rings actually look. I can't try and remember from seeing them by eye. And then we've got a little, I, I'm not sure if that's the barrel. I feel like that goes with this. This is a mystery that's unraveling as we go. We got some more mystery paper. But again, I'm making sure no little loose pieces of bits fell in there. Bubble wrap, I always keep aside when I get an unboxing and a boxing going because when I send guys stuff back, and I do have stuff set aside for both Loki and Aaron right now, just trying to fill those boxes with something meaningful, uh, I, I always use this stuff again, right? And uh, we're also going to need them for that 350 contest, guys. And there's stuff in here that Loki has said is for the 350 contest, and it's going to be because we're so close. I think we're within like 8, 10. Somewhere in there of 350, then I gotta go back, turn off the comments, and whoever's in is in, and whoever isn't, we'll catch you on the 500, but uh, Aaron and I gotta get to work to find out who won. Okay, so we've got more bubble wrap, perfect. I know I'm taking my time, guys, but I've learned what happens when you don't. I've had a Viper helmet fall, and I didn't notice it. Stepped on it, just a bit broke it. Got another motor round, yeah, buddy. Oh my god, that's huge. <laughs> there has to be a practice lift when I pull this out. Uh, let me get the other bag. The other bag looked lighter. Oh yeah, there we go. 
<laughs> yes, this is the bag I want to show you because this is the one I was talking about. One of the projects that you guys saw me start, the reason I bought Snowdrop is because of what's in this bag. Fatalditos got a kayak. His name is Version 2. I'm going to make him. Yeah, I'm not going to keep going with that. Uh, oh, wild. Loki. All right, guys, I'm going to walk you through just something I just saw. I know I didn't ask for it, but he put it in there. There's one part of the kayak. Here comes the other part of the kayak. Now, I know you guys are like, by Ryan, you got those Barbie kayaks the other day. Oh, and I think there's a middle part where I have to pin it. It's either way. It's good to go. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I know I got the other kayaks as well. But one different one, like a, a like a, this is a different shape and profile than the other one. And then the other two skirt. And there's lots of good, good things to be had in having two different types. And I, uh, I was so happy when he showed me that. That's awesome. Always, always, always happy to see these. Good tack vests. Loki has access to good tack vests. They're a nice gummy pliable um, resin. You And you don't have to heat them up or pull your arms off your figure to put them on. They fold on and uh, molded pin sets that you can... You can either just clip it on, or if you're, you know, you're you're that satisfied and sure it's staying on that character the way you want, you can glue it. Uh, but yeah, I uh, I was very happy to ask these. I did a very average order with Loki guys, and uh, he allowed me to pay it off weekly. Very much thanks. He knows how that fits in for a retiree like me. You know that budget. Oh, they don't man income. Um, so I'm going to return to giving him more and more money over time because he does stuff like this. He gives you more than what you ever asked for uh, as far as quality, right? You expect one thing, he puts that extra effort in and does another thing. So uh, I'm very happy with him. I'm not going to go uh, too crazy, but I've been ordering a couple of different characters with a kit and a specialty character. That's what I ordered here today was, uh, I believe it was one, two... Two main character, like, uh, head and kit accessories. I will see them as I identify them. And then my stalker and a V2 conversion kit entire, right? So, uh, so far you've seen a short fuse mortar. That was it, guys. Short fuse. I really wanted to do one. Now I can. You're seeing more vests. Uh, and yes, some of this stuff is for prizes. And Loki was being, you know... Kind, because he really appreciates what me and Aaron do for him. And we appreciate what you do for us, Loki. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this parcel was heavy, boys. Look at that shield. That's wild, man. You know, that reminds me of a road pig. But it's almost, no, it's it can't be road pig. Road pig would be all slapped up with plates. That's more symmetrical. That's like a, a techie kind of one. That's interesting. It's been beat up nicely too. That's interesting. I gotta think on that. Do I make a end state viper, alley viper? And we got some nice, beautiful head sculpts coming out of there. All right. So one of the characters I had asked for was dial tone, but Loki doesn't just have access to one dial tone. He has access to both available dial tones. So. We have a female and a male dial tone, which means one of them has got to go to Tiger Force. Tiger Force, or maybe I'll throw people on Night Force that weren't on Night Force before. Am I bitter about my wreckage getting done, Hasbro? You sons of bitches. <laughs> I thought I was getting ahead of the game by doing wreckage. Wreckage, big brawler. But no, Hasbro, you, you were thinking the same things, were you? All right. So I got a couple of these types of heads here. So one of them was originally going to be for Stalker. But now that I found my Nick Fury cap and the Stalker head, it might still use it, but I have a few different characters. But uh, yeah, one of these I definitely have a plan for. And oh my goodness, guys. I uh, I'm What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you features of this stuff. Uh, the things that get me excited as I see them. And I'm going to end this video what, one hour. <laughs> Uh, yeah, one out. Nope. Look at that. 
high and tight haircuts. Oh, some of the stuff is gravy gold, baby. Some webbing, some ski poles, right? One thing my, uh, you know, my, my winter conversions need, ski poles, web gear, some good paratrooper gear at that. Yeah, you can see I can fix these. But yeah, some, uh, if you guys, oh, I didn't like Airborne's kit. Mm, talk to Loki. Talk to Loki. Just talk to him. Give him a shout. Reach out there to a model misfits 1138. Pick yourself up some snowshoes for your guys uh, to go back up that uh, snow job. Pick yourself up some demo charges that you guys know I liked because I what I say, Recon Diver, he came with this stuff. Snake Eyes, he comes with this stuff. That's awesome. Loki, thank you so much. That I'm going to open in a minute. What? Yeah, I said I wanted Stalker loaded out for the winter, right? Now, the other part of this is while I'm doing Stalker, I can also be doing um, the kit I needed to do for Blizzard and work on a low light custom, like I've been saying I wanted to do to finish off my winter line. Oh, nice. I had asked them for more heads like these. Okay. Beautiful. More vests. We're getting through this bag. Look at it. Different kinds of resin used, but picture that all white. That's going to be a beautiful backpack right there, right? Uh, you know, beautiful rucksacks with lots of bergens and pouches and riggins and rolls. Oh, I'm, I'm all about that. You could sit and burn off the better part of an afternoon going through Loki's catalog. Now I'm just doing it by fistfuls, guys. He <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, buddy. I wasn't going to wait for the dragonfly. Hell no, I was not going to wait for the dragonfly. <laughs> that has been on my burner. I've wanted that for my truckers, guys, so bad. Because I knew I wasn't going to get a dragonfly. But now I'm thinking, uh, because I have a surgery going on and it's right around Joe Fest, uh, I might just have to wait till Joe Fest for next year as opposed to this year. But that might free up something in the budget for me to talk to my wife about possibly buying a dragonfly or a Haslab. But yes, okay, another character I'm working on, guys. An end state variant of crankcase because I like my drivers and I've got enough vehicles for drivers, right? Might add heavy metal to there, not heavy metal. Um, yeah, heavy metal. Isn't that right? Heavy metal, rock and roll. Yeah. Heavy metal. It's that list. God, I wanted to say it's something else, but it's heavy metal. Mauler driver. Some NVGs, right? Because I had uh, another thing in mind. Little uh, holster actions. Yeah, some of them get broken, but they're like not like they were, these aren't the ones that I ordered. This was just Bucksy stuff. In fact, I think Loki said, I'm going to send you some broken parts here and there over time too. And I was like, perfect, right? Uh, so yeah, definitely the key thing was to get the holster. And like I said, if I heat things up to get gummy again, if I glue them, I glue them on. And usually my conversions, they're going to stay permanent. But this was definitely something I was going to ask him for more anyways. These tack helmets I find when I want to do a Joe conversion. Let's grab Duke over here. And I'm like, man, you know, I just want to make them a bit different. Well, now I have it. I can do things like that. And it's got an NVG mount on the front, as you can see. You know what, Duke? You've been hiding, but you know you're screwed, right? You and your brothers, that Derek, that Aaron sent. You're all screwed now! Uh, so yeah, uh, here we go. Because I mentioned Dialtone, I'm going to show you. Oh, not going to mention who that was. Secret character coming soon. Secret character going to have some fun. Yeah, and I've got some guns in here that you'll see put on there, guys. Dialtone's backpack. I know the attachment piece is out there. Right, so dial tone crankcase, those were a couple that I had asked before. Stalker, right, that was my order. Uh, the V2 Stalker is going to be a slobber knocker. Uh, it's got some fuzzy shoulder pads. Ooh. Woo -woo. Yeah, I'm being weird right now because um, I, I am very excited right now, and I'm just like going, Oh my god, how do I even? finish one project much less start a few more there's that alternate stalker head that i asked them for to do my winter stalker might still use that one i might but uh i do want the toque one as well so i got a couple options there oh 
Loki, I gotta tell you one thing. I was so glad that I had asked you for these because you wanna know what fell in my basement floor somewhere was one of tunnel rat one of my my older tunnel rats revolver. So I was really happy to have those. But yeah, go see Loki if you need guns, cause whew, hand cannons, a specialty holsters, the winter kits, all the tactical Berettas in the Sig Sours and and ARs and all that stuff. He's sitting on files upon files and piles upon piles, bags upon bags of that stuff, guys. And uh, he loves this community. I know that for sure. He loves it. Okay. And he is a very valued member of it. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, the backyard uh, battlefield boys see it. He is a... Uh, he is one of our biggest, biggest supporters. We're all very happy when we're seeing him in the chat and things are going well for him. And I'm not going to lie, guys. It means a lot to us to see him supported because Loki's a survivor. Uh, he is 100% the survivor. And don't think for a minute that life didn't try. And life don't test him, right? It tested, it, life's testing him harder than it tests some of us. And uh, for the guys like that, like him and Hush... Uh, I got all the time in the world, and quite honestly, I'd rather, I'd rather support that than uh, than a local big box toy store whenever possible, right? So, let's have a look and see. Yeah, that was empty. What's in here? I think I know which one this is. Um, there was something I wanted to try in Loki's stock, so I think it's in here. <laughs> that was weird. I had a coffee on my lip. I don't know. I forgot I was recording when I did that with my tongue, but chicks dig it. <laughs> Uh, let's have a look. Is it who I think it is? I think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, okay. These are awesome. Okay, that's cool. So, you guys remember I bought a bunch of ninjas. And a couple of them I'm sending out to Loki. Uh, and I talked about the Black Oni. And if you look up Japanese things, uh, the, the, like, actually look up Black Oni, you'd find out they are, like, the, the, the big bad demon of all demons in Japanese lore, right? The master demon. So that's what was in here. Oh! That's cool. Okay. I just said I wasn't going to ever do a Wolverine conversion, man, but... I feel like I gotta do something for Wolverine. However, we're gonna think. I know there's a lot of people out there in the conversion. So we're gonna wait to see what happens in the 350 contest, okay? Because that is a phenomenal Wolverine head sculpt, I think. Uh, it is savage as F. I think that is the old brown and uh, the old two-tone brown design from the Claremont era, I think. But it could be whatever you want. I think that's what we're looking at. If not, that's a hell of a demon face. But I, yeah, maybe it's just a demon face. But no, that's a Wolverine. That's got to be Wolverine. Uh, oh, and it's even a more technical helmet. No, this could be, this could be a modern Wolverine from the series where I haven't been collecting in the last well, quite a while. Uh, but either way, that could very well go into the prize pool because I know a couple of you guys do conversions outside of Joe. That was one. Yeah, go see Loki if you need heads and if you have ideas in yours. Man, I'm so glad we met Loki. Thank you so much for that, brother. Uh, I have another bag to open, but I am getting too close to that hour, guys. What you'll see is over the next little while, you'll see me showcasing what all came in there. There it is. But before I do that, this is a... Uh, oh, wow. You sent way more than I ordered. I'm going to pull out what I ordered. The one thing here that I recognize. And I want you guys to think about this as well. Oh, he sent extra parts, too. He sent dose, man. That's double what I asked. All right, man. Loki, I love you, brother. I love you, brother. And it's not just because you give me shit. It's because you you know we're going to make good things happen with this stuff. And uh, you know there's people watching that that are going to... They're going to get just as excited over what I'm seeing when they get it from you. Because they're going to see this stuff in order. But guys, 
Loki's got files where you don't have to maybe sacrifice a Joe figure if you don't want. Okay? They're affordable files, and I wanted to try this. Okay? So I wanted to try and make something out of one of his figures. Uh, out of the files he has. Okay? So do check out Loki War 2. Talk to him about what you're visualizing in your head about the characters you want to create. And he's got a whole other approach to doing heads and putting heads on posts that'll rest you assured. This is nothing to me. That's just mold. Uh, but the way that the heads go on and things like this, he's got a lot of really brilliant approaches, okay? So that's really cool. This figure, I don't have to break down anybody. You think you're safe? You're not safe. Don't go anywhere, little man. <laughs> but yes, we've got that. Uh, and he even threw in another one, right? I just have to... I'm sure the foot's in here, but... Like, he went above and beyond, guys. But you are going to see a lot more character customs and creations coming out of me. Uh, I'm going to go back to doing that, but I wanted to get the backdrop set up. So when I present you a new end state variant of somebody, or a new night force, or a new tiger force, or a new cobra... Um, at least they've got a good set. Holy crap, Loki. Um, no, you know what? I've got four more minutes till I make this an hour. Guys, did you want some range vipers? Because I did. I got some range vipers. Maybe you'll get a range viper if you enter the 350 contest. Some more helmets. Oh, look at that. It's just so flexy. Oh, flexy and sexy. Oh, flexy and sexy, Loki. There you go. Put that on your page, buddy. Come see Loki Wartooth. Model Misfits 1138. His stuff is flexy and sexy. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, lots more winter cold oh, slings, Loki. Yeah, you got me, brother. You see, you're right. You're right, man. I, uh, I was not ready for this. Oh, I dropped a shoulder pad. And I'm going to go do push-ups because I don't drink. Cobra Emblem shoulder pads. Very important. More wicked weapons. Wait till you see the, the weapons he's provided me in future videos, guys. Um, wicked chest rigs. Like, any way you've ever pictured your characters, you gotta talk to Loki, and he's gonna tell you that's achievable, this is achievable, this and that. I got you, brother. And you're gonna feel so much better. You're going to have some scabbards for swords. You're going to have weapons that you can't get in classified. Uh, heads that you're tired of waiting for because it's really important we get Stardust out. And, uh, you know, really excellent body kits that you can get excited about. More so than uh, having your favorite guy bump down the line. And if you wanted to make your own, I was once a man. Loki could probably help you do that too. Look at the, look at the balls on that hip joint, buddy. <laughs> Those are hip joints for one of his customs, right? So the legs will fit on there. Uh, but yeah, guys, um, Loki, thank you, my brother. I know what you've, uh, what you put into your work, and I want these guys to see just the kind of stuff that you bring to the game, because. You're the kind of guy people should be working with when they want to learn how to do stuff because you've been down that road. You've got the patience and moreover, brother, you got the passion for this, this toy, this G.I. Joe toy and so many other toys too. I know you are passionate about, but um, I really want you guys to check them out. That's Loki War Tooth in the comments a lot. Uh, Model Misfits 1138 on Instagram. I am going to be spending the better part of the afternoon getting through categorizing all of this seeing which of my character concepts i'm able to finish now which i might have to bump in front of others because he sent way more than i expected dreadnought vests anybody mm, yes quite could the crow make his own dreadnoughts possibly anyways guys i'm done doing funny little blah 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 bullshit to get through the day look at that torso oh and look you're gonna have to explain this guy's head to me okay because i uh i don't think you you sculpted or painted that did you did you paint this did you sculpt this it doesn't feel like it 
Feels like this belonged to a character, but it's definitely going to belong to a character again. That's a great head. Yeah, you'll have to explain that one, buddy. Thank you so much, Loki War 2. Thank you, you guys, for uh, helping me grow the channel. I know this is uh, going to be a rare one-hour one. Uh, I'll keep them back down to under a half hour, but there was a lot to go over today. Let me know if you're excited about the Marvel stuff. Let me know if I haven't put you on my subscriber wall and you want on there. And just let me know if you've dealt with Loki War 2 stock or, or, or we're curious for some more testimony because we'll hook you up real good with him. All right, guys. Thanks. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Bye-bye.